What's going on, peeps? Today, we will be sitting down and listening to the journey of Connor and Kevin, the father and son duo that formed the massive music reviewing channel, Turning the Tables. Sitting at 600,000 subscribers, we get to see these two bond over the latest and most iconic albums and music. They sit down each week and listen to an entire record together, sharing thoughts and opinions. The records they choose can vary from alternative rock, hip-hop, psychedelic rock, progressive metal, and many more. But how did this father and son get to this point where they're getting free concert tickets to JID and getting recognized by Lil Yachty and Charlie XCX? Why did they start the channel? Is a father actually bumping death grips? All of this and more will be uncovered in this video. Kevin is 49 years old and has a son Connor who is 23. They reside in East Vancouver, Canada. Growing up, Kevin's mother was a big music fan who bought all the hit records on the market. Kevin grew up jamming to ACDC, Gilmore, Dire Straits, the Cars, and Pink Floyd. He loved that beer and cigarettes rock and roll. After falling in love with Supertramp, he assembled his own homemade drum kit. One night, he went to his bedroom to find a free piece fake Lugwid glitter kit that his mother had bought him by frying chicken on Saturdays. They weren't in the wealthiest neighborhood, but a mother's love is truly powerful. He started playing the Beatles and Phil Collins classics on the drums before writing his own original country songs. To create more melodies, he traded in his bass drum pedal for a new guitar at Long and McQuaid. The store owner Roger gave him a replica Stratocaster red guitar. From there, he learned the chords for a book. After his writing was at a passable level where he could pitch songs to Nashville, he started getting booked for small shows in his area, which gathered him a decent following. He even had a song called Diamond Road on the radio. Unfortunately, he struggled with anxiety, which led to drinking, and soon life went into a different direction. He got a job, met his soon-to-be wife, tried music a bit more, but after the birth of his son Connor, it was time to place focus on his family. Kevin stopped listening and playing music to focus on his new family. He was working 9-5 to five long hours to provide for his son and later on daughter. He only listened to the albums he had previously heard years back and didn't bother to step out of his comfort zone for new material. 6-11 to 11 year old Connor started listening to the music that his father would put on. This includes Keen and Coldplay. Connor wasn't too interested. Kevin introduced him to the drums, but him being pushed into doing so caused him to push back. His heart wasn't in music like his father's was. Until 2012 to 2013, Connor started hearing albums after his friend showed him Kid Cudi's first mixtape. He was shocked at Cudi's honest and introspective lyricism translated to hip-hop. The kid named Cudi in Mac Miller's Blue Slide Park was what got him into music. By grade 10, he dived into more hip-hop greats like Outkast, Jay-Z, Nas, and Eminem. He discovered the needle drop and admired his diverse taste. He soon looked up a greatest albums of all time list and found Radiohead's Kid A. Then he became a Radiohead head. This brought Connor towards everything he listens to as of today. Kendrick, Frank Ocean, Daft Punk, you know, the average music nerd taste. Other than music, the young boy had some internet ventures. Connor started off doing gaming and skit videos on his old YouTube channels but didn't generate a whole lot of success. He had been in the YouTube games for years and has always had an interest in creating reaction content. He found himself watching watching others' reactions to TV shows and music. Connor aspired to create a calm, laid-back music reaction channel with podcast elements where he could digest the music naturally with another. He doesn't like reaction channels that get overly excited. He prefers a more calm mood. He was inspired by the Cuffboys who did a reaction to Bones featuring one of the members' mother. He thought this was hilarious and gave him an idea to do something similar with his father, who he knew was a former musician. I love all kinds of art. I like music and film, and one of my favorite things about just experiencing art is being able to share it with other people and see how they react to it and how they feel, see if they feel the same, and I want to do that with my dad because we tend to share a lot of the same interests. It would take a lot of convincing for him to be on board, but his father was going through something. He had left his job of 24 years in the restaurant industry before the COVID times. He worked to build restaurants until a company had bought them out. He knew it was time to leave once his wife caught up on his drinking habits. He needed something to get his mind off things, which led to him forming a band in early 2020. They started recording, playing one show in February, and then COVID hit to shut everything down. This prevented live music for practically the entire music industry for two years, hurting indie musicians the most. During these two years, 
years, Kevin was diagnosed with an autoimmune disease called enteropathic arthritis, which messed up his tendons and stressed him out mentally and physically. His children didn't want to see their friends out of fear of catching something that could lead to their father feeling worse. But in 2021, Connor had asked his father during the height of his poor mental state to try filming a reaction video covering Radiohead's A Moon Shaped Pool. The band wasn't working out and his attempt at landscaping was being held back by his condition, where he just didn't want to do anything. Kevin denied Connor's request several times, but one sunny day, he decided to give it a shot, as he wasn't feeling nearly as crappy. They sat down in two lawn chairs on their porch and listened to the latest Radiohead record. Their setup wasn't that special, a poor quality camera with rough lighting and a singular microphone for the two to share. When Connor uploaded the video to YouTube, he didn't care if it got a bunch of views or subscribers, he saw it as something to look back on in 20 years when he wanted to relive the time he listened to Radiohead with his father. He wanted to share the music he loved because he didn't know how long his father would be around to based on his condition. YouTube was a place where he could access this memory. Connor himself had a few health issues, not satisfied with his current office job and barely graduated high school. He didn't even bother to go to any college. A month before he started the channel, he had ended a three-year relationship and wasn't in the best headspace. After he came back from work, he decided to watch the video to find out it had 130 views. It was posted on Reddit by a complete stranger. He was actually frustrated about this and thought his father had posted the video on Facebook or something. How else could this low quality video be gaining views? Turns out it was just being spread naturally by total strangers. These strangers suggested more Radiohead albums like OK Computer. They considered trying again as there was some sort of audience there. They bought another microphone to start the OK Computer filming, not expecting anyone to view it. To their surprise, many viewers enjoyed the concept and they've been doing a new record every week to this day. As they grew, Kevin felt the need to respond to almost every comment their fans were leaving. He felt some type of power from this, an encouragement even if he was messed up physically. Their earlier fans were shocked that Kevin had not heard of Radiohead given his age and how popular they were in the 2000s. He just never got into their aesthetic as it was too weird and mysterious. I'd say their success can be attributed to the growing popularity of reaction videos, especially for hip-hop albums. The father-son dynamic adds authenticity and appeals to the audience's desire to witness others' joy in discovering favorite albums for the first time. The reaction are so genuine and welcoming that it feels like you were sitting down and listening with them. It's all so natural. There are even jokes made in the comments about Kevin's foot size and his twitchy eyes. Both of them don't take it serious, obviously. It's just simple banner. The chemistry between the father and son has built a relationship that anyone who has a father finds appealing. Heck, he might not even have one and you'd still find a wholesome. Their friend Chris was the one who came up with their channel name. The name Turning the Tables is pretty much Connor, the son, turning his music over to his father. It's kind of a play on turntables as well. As I explained, their early videos covered Radiohead albums, but after several suggestions, they covered Tool's Lateral Lists and John Misty. Production quality improved with each video, and they gained about 8,000 subscribers and 180,000 impressions by late August. This gave Connor some options as he had to balance his current office job and make YouTube content. Yet every time he sat down at his office job for 8 hours, he didn't feel the need to be doing so he could have been using this time to make more content, so he quit once he realized the channel was going to be his new job. Connor started getting messages from people requesting music for them to listen to and telling them they loved the dynamic between the father and son. And now Kevin said he loves hearing from people the most. I print them and bring them to Connor, he said. The letters that move them the most he keeps in his office to motivate him. He's a big relationship kind of guy who also enjoys music. What Connor created let these two worlds of his collide, leading to Kevin feeling happy every day in comparison to how he was in 20 20 to 2021, it's a great turnaround. Just like his father, the direct messages and comments were giving Connor motivation to keep it going. A request from their growing community led to hip hop album reactions, beginning with Kendrick Lamar's The Pimp Butterfly, which garnered a million views. Their video on Kanye West's My Beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy became their biggest hit with 2 million views and drove significant growth. Connor and Kevin expanded into the rap genre with reactions to Kid Cudi and Travis Scott. They also launched an Instagram account due to large demand. 
To clarify, when they have an album that they're covering on vinyl, they will display it in front of them. But if it's an album they don't own or something that's not available on vinyl, they just edit it in. Imagine spending vinyl on an album you don't end up liking. That suck. Anyway, each video was averaging 100,000 to 200,000 views, and four months after the channel's launch, they reached 100,000 subscribers. Despite their success, they were running into a problem that all music channels face. Copyright. They make almost no money from YouTube. Yup, despite linking the recording artists and songwriters, they still forfeit ad revenue. To offset this loss, they opened a Patreon account, gaining thousands of Patreons within two weeks and generating monthly revenue. A blue membership will give you access to their Discord and uncut album reactions or VODs. A red membership will give you exclusive videos for the Patreon community, and a yellow membership will allow you to be shouted out by name in every video. The community surrounding Turning the Tables is truly something special. It has given Connor and Kevin a new appreciation for human connections and how music can truly bring people together. This allowed Kevin to fall in love with music again. He was now in tune with the latest trends in the music world and even older records he never heard about. He could have natural conversations about Kendrick Lamar or The Weeknd records, including talks in detail about the production and vocals. These videos, in a sense, revived Kevin. It brought back the magic of music he had lost decades ago. You gave me new life, like, you really did, Kevin said. You and I are just sitting, talking about music, and then having the headphones on together, and having two hours together. We've never done that in such an open way. Kevin soon picked up his guitar that he had left collecting dust decades ago. He was strumming Beatles classics again, and even current pieces like Coffee Bean by Travis Scott. Through sheer consistency and spectacular retention rates from their patient fans, who want to witness every moment of these two taking in the music, the channel continued to skyrocket into the algorithm to attract new viewers. They had more big hits such as Graduate by Kanye and Igor by Tower of the Creator. Heading into the new year, they were on path to 200,000 subscribers six months after the channel's origin. As they continued to create content, they were now getting contacted by huge musicians like Lil Yachty and Charlie XCX, as well as receiving free concert tickets to rapper Jid. The best part of all of this success has been the relationships they've been able to create. They've found music that they would have never found if it wasn't for this channel. Kevin would have never seen his wife humming Mac Miller and artist Connor showed his father on the channel. The Gorillaz album inspired Kevin the most, as it gave him an idea that you can create characters in music. You don't have to go by your real identity or tell your story. You can do so much more and get the same quality music. So many great experiences would have never come true if it wasn't for the videos they created. After collecting millions of views in 2022, they cracked 500,000 subscribers on January 4th, 2023. They were halfway to the big million mark. Based on the fact that they have 600,000 in the present day, it's safe to assume they are getting 200,000 subscribers each year. I'd estimate that they'll cross 7 digits in 2025. What an inspiring journey to be achieving internet stardom alongside your father. I find this to be so damn wholesome. To think of the situation that this family was in during like 2020, to them being much more comfortable now, it just shows how important family truly is and that you should embrace it for as long as you can. So please, interact with your family circle, find common interests, build a connection because you never know what could result from it. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe for more base content. Also, try to get this video to Kevin and Connor. I love for them to see this somehow. I want them to see how far they have come and how important their story is for everybody. What is your favorite moment between these two? I'll see y'all in the next video. This was incredible to put together. Peace.